Well, uh, I'm going to start with some show and tell. Um, I had said that I, I, I talked about my students' notes in the past. That girl, Hannah, uh, there, there's her cover. Uh, she kept her notes, but she gave me the cover because she was going to throw it out. And uh, there's the back cover. Uh, just such a, such a good artist. Uh, here's a cover that earlier uh, a student, a girl, was, was going to give a uh, throw away. And, uh, you know, I thought that was pretty nice too, and I asked for it. Uh, and then this isn't so pretty, but it's evidence of what I'm talking about. This student, whoever it was, uh, I think it was a guy, he uh, was filling in the texture here uh, to, so his hands would be doing something. All right, I wanted you to see that. Now, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see these, but here's a page from, I think, a Flemish calendar. I, uh, I can't say that it's the same size. Uh, but anyway, I, I would look at something like that and, and love it. I'd stare at it in detail to see how did they build their bridges, how did they prune their trees. Uh, I've had a lifelong fascination with that kind of thing. All right, now, going through the seasons. This, this is what, these are the postcards that I got at the British Museum. That is uh, January. There is, should be February. I'm not looking. Oh, <laughs> this should be... March. Here's April. May. That or maybe that's what you just saw was May. We're going through the year anyway. June. <clears throat> that was that was June. Here's July. Now this is the actual size. You see, these are postcards. Uh, where was that? This is August. This is what people were doing in August. There's September, <clears throat> October, November, and then finally December is kind of beat up looking. Let me make sure. Of it. Yes, that's it. But I like to point out to the kids that this is the actual size. And if you look at this in detail, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but you can see that back there in the field behind a woman baking bread is a deer running across the field. If you look closely, you can see the deer is jumping over a, a, a fence. You can see that there's a gate in the fence. You can see that there are dogs chasing the deer. And you can even see a hunter standing behind a tree waiting for that deer. Uh, and one kid pointed out to me that that is a buck. That's a buck. It's got horns. Now, that's the size it was painted. Uh, how they did that, how you got a line on paper that fine, I don't know. A single human hair is your brush? I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. But uh, that's a, an art that I greatly admire. Related to it, I had a very good friend, or still have a very good friend, who gave me this once. I couldn't believe that, that I could actually be given such a thing. This is not a postcard. This is a real thing. This is a page out of medieval manuscript. If it were an illumination, an illuminated page, it would be worth tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, as it is, it's just a page. But, and it's in Latin. But if you can look what happened up there, whoever did this doodled. He started to do marginalia. Uh, the, the letters have gold paint on them. All right, I guess that's enough uh, of show and tell for now. If I find that other book, I'll show it to you. Très riche, uh, very rich hours. I think if you would Google that, you would see the book that I'm talking about, uh, 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 I think. Anyway, and the Flemish calendar, that was from the early uh, 16th century, so it would be maybe 15, 1510. It's in the British Museum. Again, you could Google those, I'm sure, images, and you could look at, look at very good images of them. All right, we're going on to the Renaissance. I'm going to call, and uh, in England, it's pronounced Renaissance. It, for, in America, for some reason, we say it sort of the French way, Renaissance. Uh, I'm going to say from about the year 1500 to about the year 1600. Actually, it was longer than that, but that's just convenient. Uh, for me to talk about it like that, a, a period that's a hundred years long, much shorter. Well, it, it's probably it's a little longer than that. For history, well, I, I've had some trouble 
figuring out just what should I tell you as history. It's what the Renaissance gave us, uh, the, the classics. That's where the real subject's going to be. But anyway, uh, the Protestant Reformation uh, had gone on, and uh, uh, just into the beginning of the 1600s, there were tremendous wars in Europe fought over that. I I'll speak about that in the in the uh, the 17th century, which will be uh, 1600 in the next period. Protestant Reformation had occurred. <coughs> there was a Counter Reformation uh, where the Church, Catholic Church tried to crack down. Uh, the Renaissance spread from Italy to the north, and the city in Italy that's given credit for being the birthplace of it is Florence. Uh, Florence is not, most people aren't as quick to think of Florence as they would maybe Rome, certainly not Rome or, uh, or Venice. But Florence is where it was supposed to have really uh, gotten going, largely because of a family called the uh, Medici. But it spread to the north, uh, maybe 50 years later, maybe even 100 years later. It took a while to get to the north. In England, this period is known, I'm going to call it the Elizabethan period. Uh, even though Elizabeth, she was on the throne for a long time. Uh, but, uh, but most people, I think, expand that in their minds to go a little bit after the Elizabethan period and a little bit before it as well. <coughs> Her father, Henry VIII, he was a very... Uh, noteworthy uh, man. Uh, he had six wives. He to, there is a cute song that goes, I'm Henry the Eighth, I am, Henry the Eighth, I am, I am. I got married to the widow next door. She'd been married seven times before, and everyone was an Henry. She wouldn't take a Willie or a Sam. No, Sam, I'm her eighth old man. I'm Henry. Henry the Eighth, I am. It was a cute little song in the 19... <coughs> 1960s, I think. Anyway, uh, it, it's a play on on the eighth Henry. Well, but Henry the King, he had six wives. He beheaded at two of them, I think. Uh, and and uh, see, this I, I was going to tell you at some point. Here is history that is so interesting. Uh, I, I can only begin to get into it. I, I can't. I don't tend to remember history that well, <coughs> but. Uh, I, could, I can guide my viewers toward it. Many people have been fascinated by this 50 years or so when uh, around Elizabeth's life, uh, starting, say, with his six wives. Why he, uh, one of them, he, he as my understanding, is he executed her because uh, he couldn't get a divorce. Church wouldn't give him a divorce. But if his wife was dead, well, then he could... Mary, or something like that. So much of this had to do with the Catholic Church trying to keep, Roman Catholic Church trying to keep control. Uh, well, I'll, I'll say more about that. He was a Renaissance man. I'm going to do a lot with that term, Renaissance man. I'll explain it uh, again uh, uh, Monday. This is Friday. He was good at many, many things. In a word, that's what a Renaissance man is. Somebody who's not just good at one thing, but good in many things. He was a, an athlete. He jousted. That's what killed him, I think. A, an injury that he suffered jousting later on killed him. Uh, but he was a poet. He was a, a, a composer. He could dance. He played tennis. He was a wrestler. Uh, a tree, and, uh, so he sometimes used as an example of a Renaissance man, somebody good at so much. Well, he established the Church of England. Boy, this is major. Whoa, sorry about that. The wind is blowing really hard. I jumped. I was going to tighten the doors. Um, he, he, uh, yeah, maybe that's because I said the Church of England. Bang. Uh, the Anglican Church is sometimes called as well. In the United States, it's called the Episcopal Church. And his reason was not so much religious. He didn't want the Pope telling him what to do. He would be the head of the church, and it would be the Church of England. So the Episcopal Church, or the Anglican Church, in many ways is not that different from the Roman Catholic Church, except that it does not acknowledge the Pope as the head of the church. Uh, uh, he's the father of Queen Elizabeth uh, the I. The current queen is Queen Elizabeth II, um, also known as the Virgin Queen. Well, she never married. Uh, and uh, and that's where she gets this name, the Virgin Queen. Well, if she really was a virgin, I think there's a lot of doubt about that. <coughs> but 
Uh, she didn't marry, and she probably would have loved to have married if it could have been the right man. But, uh, but, after, but when she was queen, by not marrying, uh, she was going to have to marry royalty. And all these kings from Europe wanted to marry her, even though she was reputed to have been ugly, uh, bald from losing her hair as a, as a young woman, as a, a, from a fever. Uh, <coughs> but she didn't marry because that way England, <coughs> I'm sorry, <coughs> England did not become part of, say, Germany or Spain uh, or France. Uh, England was able to stay independent, partly through her non-marrying. <coughs> the uh, American state of Virginia is nicknamed after her, the Virgin State, uh, or the Virgin Queen, her state, Virginia. Sir Walter Raleigh was a very colorful figure who lived at this time. Uh, she sank the Spanish Armada, her, her navy did, in 1588. I'm pretty sure that's right. It, I find it easier to remember years that are like that. I'm pretty sure it's 1588. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, and she loved plays, <laughs> which made Shakespeare's work possible. And I'll have lots to say about him. But, uh, but back to this sinking the Spanish Armada. There began, a, that's, a, that's major, because with that, Spain began to lose its, uh, its uh, worldwide influence. Uh, it was such a powerful empire with its colonies and all its gold. <clears throat> and it had this huge armada, which is a navy. Well, uh, Queen Elizabeth's English navy, smaller, faster ships, they uh, destroyed it uh, in the English Channel. Uh, it, it, all of this is so interesting. Uh, there are uh, maybe as show and tell in the next video, maybe I'll come up with uh, uh, recommended videos to watch about the Spanish Armada, about Queen Elizabeth. Wow, there's so many, especially lately. But there's one I think is better than all the rest, and I, I'll I'll find it and I'll, if it's on YouTube or available, I'll tell you what part it is that I usually use with my class. Uh, it's about Elizabeth when she was a child up till she was about 14. That's the time I take. Uh, and then uh, just last night, I watched a movie with my wife called Anonymous. It's about this period, Anonymous. Uh, 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 it, it suggests that uh, Shakespeare wasn't who we really think Shakespeare was. Uh, uh, th there is just so much interesting history here. I, I don't know of any other time in history, I, I really don't think, uh, that, that there has been so much fascination with what went on during that time. In English history, I, I, I don't think there's anything like it. Uh, all right, um, I'll, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, Friday, uh, on, uh, on Monday I'll go on uh, with, uh, with the Renaissance. Uh, and I hope you have a lovely weekend.